So you get your new Mac, you think everything is good, you're ready to edit, and then all of a sudden after editing for a little while, you get this particular dreaded message right here. So I've actually done a video on this issue before. However, I do need to update it because I've learned some key, key things that I think can help you and maybe prevent this issue from happening again. So in today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into the problem so you can definitely have an understanding of what is happening and exactly how to fix it for your particular situation. Read them up and let's go. Some of the things that might be causing this particular problem is going to be your background rendering and your render files or either your optimized or proxy media there or how you have your library original media stored on your computer. So the first culprit that you're going to run into here is going to be what is called cache. Depending on how you have your Final Cut Pro set up here, you can come here and click on the library and then if you come over here to library properties right here, you're going to have a couple different information here and you'll see it has your storage locations, it has your media and then down here you see something that says cache and this is your in library here and you can see cache is made up of render files, analysis files, thumbnails, images, audio wave files, all this stuff here. These are not needed files here. So here's a fix. While you still have the library selected, you're going to come up here to file and if you scroll down to this part here that says delete generated library files and then you're going to get this box right here. You're going to select delete render file. Now I do need to let you know, this will not affect anything on your timeline. This will not delete any of your original files. Everything in your project and your original files will still stay intact. This is just the cache that you do need to clear out to create more hard drive space for you. So again, delete render files. This time I'm going to do unuse only. I'll tell you the difference between the different boxes here and address these two here. You hit OK. Ah, and as you can see there, it has cleared up a significant amount of space there. This is going to vary from project to project and library to library, depending on how much it is that you're editing. Usually the more that it is that you're editing and the more effects layers or adjustment layers and stuff like that, that you do have in your timeline, the more render files that's going to build up. And that's what can cause it to get huge at times and that's a quick and dirty way to fix it there. Now when it is that you're still working in a project because you probably want the benefits of a fast render there, that's why I said do unuse only because that will keep some of the render files there in order to give you that quick export that you need. However, once it is that you're finished with your edit and you have done your final export, come back into the library again and do the same thing, delete generated media files there. And this time we're going to do all. This time it's going to take everything out of the cache there. And that cache should go down almost to zero there. But as you can see, that one went all the way down to 69.1 megabytes there. And again, this does not affect anything with your original files or in your project files there. When it is that you actually delete all, it just might take a little bit longer to render at the end. So deleting the cache slash render files should fix most of you guys' problems. However, I do want to talk about a few more other things that may be causing this problem and could be ballooning up your hard drive space there for no reason there. The other thing is optimize or proxy media files there. If you have no idea what this is, I do have a video on that, which I will link below. However, long story short is proxy files or optimized media transcodes other video files there that you use for editing, which is easier on your process there and is less processor intensive. So it's same thing here when it is that you are done with your project and you're done editing there and you've done your final render, you can come back into here, same thing, delete generated media files there and you could select delete optimized media and delete proxy media there to go ahead and clear out those files and get some more hard drive space for your computer there. Also side note, if it is that you're editing on a newer Mac computer, one of the M1 Macs there, you actually don't need to use optimized or proxy media anymore. If you have an older Mac, it's a little bit different. You might need to use optimized or proxy media, but if you do have a newer Mac there, I would just recommend not creating optimize or proxy media there on import. The other mistake that I see people make in terms of taking up too much hard drive space in Final Cut Pro is that they're doubling up their media files there. Now, if it is that you are importing directly from your card into Final Cut Pro, it's fine to do that. But I know some people, what they do is, is that they copy the files onto, let's say their hard drive, and then they're importing it to Final Cut Pro. When it is that you do that and you do the import, and you already have it on the hard drive that you want to edit from, you want to make sure that you click this box right here 
leave files in Pris. If you copy to library, you're gonna create a duplicate. And if you're dealing with big files and whatever, you already have them on the hard drive and then you duplicate them in another Final Cut Pro library, that's just unnecessary there if you've already copied the files to the hard drive that you want to edit from. I do have a future video coming for this, so definitely hit the subscribe button and the like button if you're getting any value from this video. If that video is already ready, I will link it up here so you can go ahead and watch it as well, how to properly import Final Cut Pro media and not have any issues or duplicate videos to take up extra hard drive space there. And then last but not least there, sometimes you just don't have enough hard drive space on your actual dedicated computer and that is not a problem at all. What you want to do is get an external hard drive to edit from, but not just any hard drive there. You want to get an SSD hard drive. If you want to see what I think is the best SSDs there for Final Cut Pro, go ahead and click this video link right here. Or if you're a little bit early, hit the subscribe button or the notification button and it will be the next video coming up here soon. I'll see you over there. Big up yourself. Peace.